Hello, and a warm welcome to our weekly show, Love Athletics. In this program, we bring you the latest highlights from our sport with expert input from different continental areas. And we're delighted to have on our show today, the amazing Jody and Bio from the Backstraight Boys. <laughs> Hi, nice to see you. <laughs> Lovely to see you again. How are you? Anna, we're very good. The same to you, because um, I remember back in the day, we used to see you all the time at all the athletics meets. You were very kind to us. Um, and it's lovely to be reunited and to chat about our everybody's favourite sport. But we're Definitely. very tired. We're yes. very, very tired. <laughs> I've had three I've had three hours sleep. I got to bed about half five last night. Um, but I'm up just for you. Only for you would I do this. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank you. <laughs> I know we're not looking at our freshest and uh, best <laughs> as we no. usually do, but uh, it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a week now, hasn't it, of no sleep or random sleep because we've been sleeping because of the time difference. We're in we're based in London because um, it's eight hours ahead of us. So everything starts about one in the morning for us. So we have to have a little bit of sleep in the evening from like, I don't know, 10 until one. Stay up to watch all the sports and then um, go back to sleep around five, half, whenever we can get to sleep after the excitement um, and then wake up and do things like this and do some work in the day. <laughs> And then have a little snooze again. So yeah, it's it's interesting. But you know, this is every year, every every couple of years, depending on where the championships, we're used to this. Yeah. And you guys are actually lucky because we have a nine hour time difference. Oh. So I'm going to sleep at six AM. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> So there's lots of other competitions going around uh, uh, the world, uh, mainly age category championships, but really the focus is on the big one. It's on the world uh, championships. So we'll be looking uh, with Jody and Bio at the highs and a few lows from uh, events in uh, Eugene. But first, let's focus on our guests. So Jody and Bio, you're mega fans of athletics and real <laughs> experts of our sport. And uh, they can be seen at most uh, major events, also worked uh, a couple world uh, championships uh, and uh, Olympic Games. But Jody, you told me some years ago that uh, world championships were too important to be on <laughs> You, had to, <laughs> you had to be glued to the television and to the computer screens to check every, out every single detail and not miss a beat. Is that still the case? I mean, I know you guys took a, a week off uh, your day job. Well, I tried to, but unfortunately, I've got a load of work on at the moment. So I, I'm having to, to, to juggle that as well. So the thing is with the major championships is that when you're actually at the championships, yes, it's loads of fun to be there. It's, love, it's amazing to see the athletics live. And like, we've been in the stadium when Usain Bolt's broken world records. We've, we've been to, to major championships. We were at Berlin, we were in Daegu, we were in uh, Moscow, we were in Paris, we were in London. So it's not like we don't go to um, the world championships. It's just that when you're actually in the stadium, you miss lots of stuff. Yeah. You don't know who's qualified. You don't get um, um, the, you reaction don't get times. Seeded. Yeah, don't get reaction times. We don't know who's Replays. disqualified. We don't, so all of that stuff that is really important to people like us, because that, like, of course, who comes across the line first is important, but we want to know all the other stuff as well. And when you're at home, not only do you get that from the TV, but you can be on Twitter the whole time, talking with other fans, interacting, having a gossip. Um, so that's really important part of watching it as well. Um, unfortunately, when it's a championships like this one, which is so the time difference is so, so difficult for us. A lot of that is missed as well, because like, <laughs> yes. I'm watching it in my bedroom and I've got neighbours and I can't be screaming. I mean, I could. I know we, we did definitely <laughs> did during the Olympics, didn't we? But um, it's a bit mute, a bit more muted when it's this kind of um, um, time difference. But obviously next year we've got Budapest a year after we've got Paris. So that I think we'll probably be at both of them. But um, yeah. if not, we'll, we'll be at our home, probably be together as well. We'll probably be around each other's houses um, watching together. The other thing is, at a championship, it's not just the performances on the track. There's always lots of other stuff going on. You know, there's like always some kind of drama or, or something happening, which you find out about when you have pundits talking or you're yeah, on, on yeah. The, the internet. Um, when you're in a stadium, possibly with no Wi-Fi, um, yeah. sometimes it's really hard to catch up with everything that's going on. The amount of times I've been somewhere, um, taped everything at home, obviously, come home and watched it, and you find out things you 
didn't even know had happened. Found out things you completely missed in the stadium. So sometimes an event, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But sometimes it's too important to actually be there because you need to actually know exactly what's going on, which you can only find out at home. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, guys, let's go back to where it all started. What made you fall in love with athletics? Um, I can't remember a time when we weren't obsessed with athletics, and I don't know why, because there's no, nobody in our family. My mum likes it a bit, but like it's but not. I think I think I think I do know why. Okay. Um, so I think at the 1980 Olympics, um, our grandmother she watched the opening ceremony um, on her colour television, and we only had a black and white television at the time. That's how old we are. Um, and we had a black and white television and our nan thought this opening ceremony was so exciting that she bought us a colour television. And I, I, I don't really remember the, um, the um, 1980 Olympics. I remember it a bit. I remember it being on. I don't remember the specifics, but I think that's probably where it started, um, watching the 80 Olympics on a colour television for the first time. Because well, I, I entirely... Always... Sorry, go oh. on. I vividly remember the 1982 Commonwealth Games and the 1983 World Championship. Absolutely, that's so just we what were, I was going to say, yeah. We were eight or nine um, when we, and then by, by 84, we, like, we watched every single thing. And I'm just looking up here because I've got athletics books up here and I'm pretty sure I've got like guys yeah, that I probably <laughs> had from, uh, from the time. Um, look at this. <laughs> so, um, and there's lots more. There's all kinds of like, what's this one? Oh, no, that's, that's, that's not, that's not, that's 88. Um, but, but by yeah. this time, we, we, were, we were cutting things out of newspapers and making yep. scrapbooks, weren't we? And all this kind of stuff as, as like really young kids. So I don't ever remember not being obsessed with athletics. Our ninth, I think it was our ninth birthday ten, cake. It says there's 10 candles. Our 10 candles. So our 10th birthday cake was in the shape of an athletics track. Um, there's actually a, a picture of that somewhere. Oh, um, oh there we go. <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 my, my, my amazing nan made that as well. So she, look, there's a, look, you can see there's a, um, a pole vault that she's made a pole, but I've matched it or something. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we, we don't remember not being obsessed with athletics. And, we, and I, don't, I don't know why. You know, it's like we, we like sport. We're not obsessively into any other sport. I'll watch it if it's on. Um, and a lot of sport, I have no interest in whatsoever. I've never seen a football match in my entire life. Um, but yeah, something about athletics. I think it's the, there's something for everyone. That's that's mm -hmm. what I think I love about it. You know, it's like uh, male, female, short, tall, big, small, um, long, short. It, it doesn't matter. There's something for everyone. And there's at any and kind, Every any... single country. I mean, there's what, yes, 100, yeah, exactly. 200 countries or something. Yeah. So like, even if you look at the, the medal table already this week, there's people from Peru and Bahrain and China and like everywhere. Venezuela. Kazakhstan or, or Kyrgyzstan. Yeah. Um, there's no other that, sport like that. No. No, definitely. I mean, it, there's a, such a range of, uh, of uh, events, uh, countries, all body types uh, have an event in which they can excel exactly. in athletics, which is one of the beauties of this sport. Absolutely. Now, let's see, who were the, some of the athletes uh, that you most admired? I mean, I know you have like a huge long list. But, <laughs> <laughs> let's look at the very, very top ones. So if we're going back to when, when this all started and our obsession with athletics, I think the, probably the biggest person back then was Daley Thompson. Yeah. Like, Daley Thompson, not only, like, he was British. He was the best, and I'd still argue the best the world's ever seen. Um, my mum really fancied Daley Thompson, so he was a hot topping in our in our house. <laughs> um, but also, he was really good fun. That he was completely irrever um, irreverent. Um, there we go. Um, and he was a massive superstar in the UK, so he was definitely one. Um, also, also, one that's a bit more obscure. There was a British four hundred meter runner in the eighties, in the early eighties, called Phil Brown. Um, he would have got medals at the 84 Olympics and the 83 World. Did they get a medal, Jenny? Yeah, 82. Um, yeah, 82. 82. Um, uh, he was the brilliant, brilliant um, relay runner. So you always used to give Phil Brown the baton on the last leg and he would overtake everybody. It was so exciting to watch. And 
he was he was fine as an individual, but he really, really came alive as a relay runner. And I just very, very clearly remember watching Phil Brown so many times um, as a kid, like uh, winning on the on the last leg of a relay. And there's a picture of us somewhere. I don't know if we've, we've got it in, a, in an album somewhere. Oh, about yeah. us actually meeting him. At, I think the first time we ever went to Crystal Palace, um, where we queued up for ages to get lots of autographs, didn't we? We were probably about 13 or something. Um, so, yeah, Phil Brown was kind of there's a there's a road actually somewhere somewhere here called Phil Phil Brown Way we took a photo of didn't we Jodie you've been somewhere yeah, down by you isn't it it's yeah it's in South London somewhere Phil but it's, there's Tessa Sanderson close and uh, <laughs> <laughs> just one little estate they named them all after athletes um of course the Queen Merle Notty is my favorite Absolutely. athlete of all time like no I mean I know she never used to win very much but um <laughs> but she, she would always be a champion in, in my eyes uh, like the most glamorous, oh, look, there she is. <laughs> like the story of Merle Lotti and the drama that she put us through, like winning everything on the circuit, everything, and then coming to the championships and getting a bronze medal. And so I just. But every, that, every championship for about a decade was all about Merle Lotti, as far as we were concerned. I mean, literally yeah. all about Merle Lotti. That's the only thing I cared about. Yeah. Um, like just an, an amazing woman, uh, uh, an amazing, amazing athlete. Um, Nowadays, obviously, I think that she'd have lots of like, you know, sports psychologists and stuff because some of those races she should have absolutely, absolutely won. But I think it was the whole drama of um, and the, the anticipation and the waiting all winter to see if she's going to finally do it. And of course, she did finally do it once, twice, actually. But um, yeah, Merlin um, yeah, Lotti would always, always be my favourite well, athlete. But also look at her legacy without yeah, Merlin. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Look at the, just look at the, <laughs> look at today's. The Jamaican uh, well, Spring Queens now, yeah. 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 Um, you yeah, directly um, to, to Merle Notti. Um, who else is there from back from back in the day? Because I thought obviously, obviously there's lots of um, athletes uh, right now no. who, who we love. You know, one I really, really obsessed with, and it's just from one race, and that's Paul Irene, um, who won the 88 Olympics in the 800 meters. It's such an amazing race. He weaves his way in and out, yeah. uh, and he was. He, he, I think he'd won the NCAA's, but like apart from that, no one had ever heard of him. Um, and he weaves his way through this like um, uh, field of like really superstars um, to win. And there, there's something about the way he runs, and it's only yeah. it's only Kenyan runners who run like this. Um, Wilson Kipkeet is exactly the same. There's this lightness to them that that I can't explain. It's they kind of float across the yeah. track, and it's not it's not every Kenyan runner. It's only a certain few, but he's the first one that I really noticed doing that. Um, and yeah, that's something that I look out for in athletes nowadays. When you see an athlete that, yeah, that you know they're going to be good. He definitely had such a beautiful stride. Mm. And as you say, just flowing, it was really, really beautiful to watch. Absolutely. Mm. Um, and I think oh, yeah, one other person from the, from the 80s who we absolutely love is Doina Malinti. Doina Malinti. <laughs> <laughs> Our favourite thing in the world is to meet old athletes. So there's great athletes at the moment, you know, which we're always pleased to bump into or, or interview or something. But what we really, really love is like meeting someone really obscure from the 50s. Or something. That, <laughs> we'll probably come to that in a minute. That's our like our true, true passion. Um, and our number one person we've yet to meet is Doina Malinti. So that's that's our plan for the for the next few years is to try and track Doina down somewhere. I think back then she was one of the only Eastern Bloc athletes who used to run a lot on the on the yes, it's true on the circuit. And she'd always be like, have loads of gold jewelry jangling about, <laughs> and like a face full of makeup. <laughs> and I think I think she was just one of the the um, Eastern European athletes who was actually uh, um, accessible yes. to to us back then, because a lot of them they were quite secretive. They used to train and do whatever, and then appear at the championships. But Doina we used to see all the time. And also, just like Merlin, that's on a late eighties period where she just won everything on the um diamond league because like she won the diamond league i think a couple of times didn't she so like 89 90 um she was just cleaning up and then again she didn't quite manage to translate that to the, the championships later but she already had her olympic gold so it, it didn't yeah. matter <laughs> now tell us some of the greatest uh, anecdotes from your amazing uh, life in athletics Oh, I'm like five in athletics. <laughs> <laughs> Jody once, um, Jody once won a medal at the Kent Championships in the 400 meters. That, that's about as amazing as our, our life in athletics actually got. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, Jody... uh, meeting all these uh, superstars and uh, and just uh, yeah, chatting away with them. And I know there's a couple really really cool things that happened. <laughs> well, I... 
and you know our favorite story because i think you were probably there anna <laughs> Bayo, you tell it though so this is oh, in yes. 2000 2009 in berlin um, so we were there, we were working with... Oh, that World one, there's, a, there's another one. There's a, oh, there's a, yeah, there's a few, yeah. Um, yeah. So we were working with World Athletics, we were doing interviews for them in the mix zone. We were kind of the first people to do, like, the video interviews, weren't we? There yeah. was, like, no one else in the mix zone used to do that when we started. Um, and we got asked to appear on a stage um, off in the middle of, um, middle of Berlin to be interviewed about us being, like, the world's number one athletics fans or something. So we turned up, we were going to be interviewed by, by Charmaine Crooks on a stage in front of a big crowd. And we got there and we're waiting backstage and we find that we're waiting with Michael Johnson, Heike Dreschler, Frankie Fredericks <laughs> and Anna Kiro. That's who we were going on stage with. So embarrassed. Just like so embarrassed. Like, why, are we... <laughs> why are we here? So we had, we went on stage and we got into it about like, like in athletics or something. I thought these absolute legends, which was kind of amazing. There we go. That, that, that was but what, what was even funnier? So we left here and we've got, we all got in a car, like all of us, um, so us five a and like a couple of producers or something, minibus, was it? Um, to yeah. go back to the, um, to the athletic stadium. Now we get pulled over by the police because it was too many people in the minibus. <laughs> and we get pulled over by the police and told someone has to get out. And Heike Drescher, because we're in Germany, Heike Drescher gets out and says, oh, it's me, Hi, it's Heike Drescher, you know, let us go. And the police are like, no, get out. <laughs> 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 so gr graciously, me and Jody got out. We said, listen, you take the minibus. Like, you're the proper legend. You take the minibus and we will, we will make our own way there. But getting, getting pulled over by the police with a, in, in that company was kind of hilarious. Um, another one that I know is your favourite, Anna, is I think, by answer, do you think it was in Athens at the World Cup in 2006? I'm not 100% sure where it was. But oh, Carl, Athens, we, Athens, something like that. So what we, before we, like, we, people actually knew us and we used to get accreditation to championships and stuff, we used to just go, get really drunk and gate crash everything. <laughs> 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 because like people got to know us because we were at, at every championships and like we talked to all the athletes people used to let us into things so we just like turned up at the after party and pretend we were supposed to be there so we turned up at this party um after i think i believe it was the world cup um in, in 86 in 2006 and walked in as if we were supposed to be there sat down and then we we're walking around seeing athletes having our photos taken with athletes and stuff and Irina Shrasinska was there, the great, great, legendary Irina Shrasinska, who not only was like the one of the, or if not the best female athlete of all time, was also on the IWF Council at the time. So she's like really important and she's an icon of the sport. And she's there with her husband and he comes over to us and we're like, oh God, we're going to be asked to leave. Like there's these really important people are like staring at us. And he comes over and he says, excuse me. And we're like, yes. I'm thinking he's going to say, you're not supposed to be here. And he said, could you come and dance with Irina? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> what? <laughs> so we had the honour of dancing with Irina Shrasinska at her personal invitation. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, we just thought we'd been rumbled. We were like, oh, my God, we're going to get thrown out. And, like... <laughs> it was just so like so shocking because like she's obviously someone we've always looked up to she's a bit before our time her competing um but like obviously we've watched every video of her and read everything about her so that was an a, amazing moment and we always say to people like meeting someone like Irina Shrasinska for us is like meeting Elvis for someone or yes, you know, yeah, yeah, Franklin yeah. or something with some of people who are into music. It's that like for us it's 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 just like meeting movie stars or like pop stars. So well, for talk, us, talking was... about talking about just just one more. Um in twenty twelve we were lucky enough to be invited to the um IWF Centenary Awards. Um which again we couldn't quite be, couldn't quite believe it. Um, so we go to the the dinner the night before the awards, and it's just a who's who. Literally everywhere you turn is an Olympic gold medalist, a world champion, a record holder. But we're going back to like the forties. You know, it was like there was literally people from the forties there. It was just I mean you couldn't didn't know where to look. Everywhere you turned was like some huge legend of the sport. We were quite drunk again. There's a theme running here, um, but we were quite drunk. <laughs> 
And Jody was so excited, he just kept bowing to people. <laughs> instead of like, instead of even saying hello to them, he was just like, he was so fluffy, he was just like bowing to people. Um, but also, because the, like, we, we got, you know how we get a bit OCD, so we had to collect up like Paula, um, Paula Radcliffe and Ingrid Christensen and Rosa Motor and have a photo with all three. So we'd run around collecting people. So we have a picture with, um, you know, like, um, what, what's, what's her name? Um, High jump. Yolanda Balash and, um, Yolanda and Ballas, Dick Fosbury. Uh, and Dick Fosbury together. So we yeah. spent the most of our night running around in circles trying to gather people up to have photos with them. But there's one special lady um, that we had our photo taken with. Sorry, I interrupted your story, Maya. No, go on. Tell, tell the story. Oh, okay. So when we got there, someone said to us, Betty Cuthbert's here. And we were like, what? Betty, Betty Cuthbert. So Betty Cuthbert is the 56 Olympic champion in the 100 and 200. And then she came back in 64 and won the 400 meters. 400. And she's got, she has relay medals as well. So like she is like an absolute icon, but also she's Australian. She was in her 70s, late 70s, probably back then. Um, and also she has multiple sclerosis. So she wasn't someone that we ever expected to meet ever, ever in our wildest dreams did we ever expect to meet Betty Cuthbert. So we're like, someone said there she is and so we went over and we talked to her granddaughter and said would it be okay for us to speak to betty she said of course betty'd love to speak yeah, to you <laughs> so Bayo went to speak to her and he was having a chat and he turned around and said well and i, I like, turned around i turned around and said here's my brother my brother wasn't there and i'm like oh where is he where is he jody was in the corner crying so, so if you see this picture here just around the corner jody had gone into a corner and he was just sobbing his heart out <laughs> <laughs> I was so overwhelmed. Like, it was so over the whole thing was so overwhelming. But that is the best thing. That's probably the best moment of my whole life, to be honest. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Even now I'm getting a bit emotional. Like how exciting. <laughs> Just how exciting. <laughs> yeah, so there's lots of moments like that of us meeting like random like the europeans in 2002 where once again we just in the stadium we decided we didn't want to sit where we were sitting we wanted to sit in the vip section <laughs> <laughs> so we just climbed over the barrier and sat in the vip section nobody stopped us nobody stopped us surrounded by and it's like it was in germany in 2002 so there's all these german like these german legends and like people from the 70s that we never thought we'd get to meet Lamine Diak, who was the idea of president, he sat directly behind us. And we're like, hi, Lamine. And then as they all left, as the, as the event finished, we just followed Lamine Diak and his security into the VIP, VV VIP bar at the back, just by pretending we were supposed to be there. And inside, there is like this wall to wall of legendary German athletes. Ulrich Mayfarth was there. There was this amazing woman in a red leather outfit, tall, glamorous. And we're like, who on earth is this? She looks like she has to be somebody. But I couldn't for the life of me um, work out who it was. So in the end, having had one too many German beers, it wasn't our fault. We were in Germany. You have to drink. <laughs> I just went up and grabbed her accreditation and looked at it. And it was Martin Hellman, who's like the 1983 world champion, the 1988 Olympic champion, 87 world champion. And we were like, what? Martin <laughs> Hellman is here. Look at him. You know, she's a disco <laughs> <star>. <laughs> Back in, when she was a discus thrower back in the day, like there's a there's a discus throwers are historically, you know, they're big, tall, strong looking women. They're not these glamorous, like sophisticated <laughs> ladies in red leather. So we were like, obviously it's her, but we were so shocked, <laughs> so excited. Guido Kratzmer was there, like it was just, <laughs> it was just once again just an amazing, amazing night for us. <laughs> but we're, it's, it's, we're back in Munich this year, obviously, but we we won't be recreating that, will we, Jody? Twenty years later. No, I think we're a bit too old to be so um, so misbehaving. Right. Like, I think yeah. we're going to little more, bit, little bit more grown up and a little bit more. Maybe not. We'll see. See how how the we'll beers go. Yeah, Plus, we've met everybody now. Yes, <laughs> Marita Cock. We need to meet Marita, Marita Cock. Cock. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I have wonderful memories of uh, an evening after the two thirteen uh, uh, gala in uh, Monaco, and uh, they had invited lots of uh, champions uh, from uh, from the 1980 olympics mm. and so i had this wonderful wonderful evening with marita koch heike dreisler volker beck thomas munster and one of my idols sara simeoni and oh. it was so much fun they're just so <laughs> lovely 
<laughs> so definitely you must meet uh, Marita. She's kind of shy, but she's such a wonderful lady. I like her a lot. You don't get to be shy when Joe, when us two attack you. It's <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with anything. How 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 much fun is it that Marita Cox? son daughter married heike dressler's son <laughs> like obviously all we can think about now is the grandchildren and how good they're going to be at athletics <laughs> <laughs> so tell us then some of your favorite athletics uh, moments before oregon 22. right again you're really having to pick and choose because uh <laughs> you'd be telling us the whole history of the sport exactly there's so many and, <laughs> and you know well, my favorite reasons as well aren't they like sometimes it's because it's someone you like one sometimes it was a yeah. great race sometimes because you were there there's all different reasons why you love stuff well my my number one what i think will always be my number one was kelly holmes getting two gold medals in Athens. Probably her first gold medal, the 800 is the one that's like my all-time favourite moment. And that's because we followed Kelly for like a decade at this point. And she'd had so many injuries and she'd like almost done it and then she'd broken down on that. So it was like all resting on that. And she'd looked so good in the year. And myself and John Mulkeen, who works at um, uh, World Athletics now, we had a secret thing. We were saying, shh, don't say anything. Don't, don't, don't jinx it by like saying she's <laughs> going to win. Um, and jo Jody was actually there. Jody was in in Athens working working at the Olympics, and I was staying at his house. And I um remember she won, and I was screaming so <laughs> much. <laughs> look, look, that's, yeah, um, they, the, was the medals. Like, look how little the medals were. I know the tiny the aren't they? Are like, like dinner plate, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I was screaming so much that I, I think the neighbours must have thought there was like a murder happening. And then um, John Mulkeen <laughs> called me and, and he was like, oh my God. And I just said to him, I can't talk now. I said, no, hang up, because <laughs> I couldn't cope. That's the, that's the one moment that I stick to more than anything else. That's the one I had the biggest meltdown about. Um, I mean, obviously I was there, so that was an amazing experience. So there's, that was at the, um, at the British um, camp um, with Kelly. Um, just after she'd won that first gold medal. So that must have been between um, the, the two gold medals. Um, we spoke earlier about my favourite athlete of all time. It's the Queen, Merle Notti. So I have to say, um, 1993 World Championships, when she finally got that gold medal, only just because she forgot to run for the last 10 metres. <laughs> she, she tried to lose, didn't she? She really yeah, tried. Yeah, she tried her best. <laughs> Just from following her for like from the like 82 Commonwealth is when she she, she won. So like must be from back then when we remember her and all those bronze medals and all those times when she should have won and was favourite going into the championships to actually get it right at the championships and win a gold medal. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not even me, it's Bayo. I did have a photo with Merlin, but we've lost it. No, I, I found you one. I found you one from like 1990, didn't I? Oh, OK, good. <laughs> um, yeah, so like that would always be an amazing moment because it was like it was such a build up to it. Um, and I've, I've got to give a shout out. Sorry, let me, let me give a shout out to something really recent, which is last year. And again, I don't think I've cried so much since um, since uh, Kelly won. And that is the men's high jump last year with um, and Tim Berry and Mutis Esha Barshim. Um, just like, oh, my God. I mean, there was a video going around, like a, a video that we got we filmed for the um, World Athletics of us watching it. Um, it was so perfect. It's like, yeah. and I'm so, it's, I'm so pleased that they understood the rule because I think yeah. other people would have just carried on because they thought they had to. Um, but just that, can we have, can we have two goals? <laughs> and like, I love the fact they'd already decided they were having two goals. They were just being polite, weren't they? But like, can we have two goals? Just but as amazing. you said, and the video is on all the social media. It's on World Athletics. It's also on our Instagram and Twitter. Um, when. Um, you said because you're like really emotional bio goes it's so olympic because <laughs> <laughs> and it is it's what the olympics should be about right it's about yeah. the, obviously they won gold but it's also about the participation and the friendship and the brother uh, brotherhood and all the rest of it and yeah. there's it's not just about like being they are the best they were both the best that day they both got um two got they both got a gold medal what would have been achieved by having a jump off i don't know like one would it, would it just meant that one, one of your it would have been one of your good friends would have had to lose. Why? Yeah. Why should anyone lose when you could both win? You know, and not just that, way. but not only did they both win a gold medal, they both won like 
in the they PR, won, in the, in the like, Olympic legendary status, that people are going to They won the Olympics, didn't they? They won the actual Olympics, yes. <laughs> it was the number one story out of the Olympics. They're going to be asked to every event forevermore together. Um, they're going to make a lot of money from doing that as well. So I think everyone's a winner. Um, that was That was brilliant. Um, my other another moment that I'm absolutely obsessed with, and I'm this is probably the athletics video that I've watched most on um, YouTube. YouTube is the 1993 men's 5,000 meters, and I'm going to tell everybody to go and watch that race now. Um, Ishmael Karui goes in; he's only 17. He's the third ranked Kenyan, and he, the expectation is that he will go out and he would probably, you know, there's going to be some tactics, which I don't feel people do enough anymore. <laughs> no, exactly. uh, Kenyan, really good at it he was going to go out really fast and set it up for his compatriots which i think paul Beatop was probably their favorite and so it goes off really fast i think joseph chisire goes off really fast for the first couple of laps and then ishmael karui takes over and he just kicks in like a four minute mile in the middle of the five thousand, and he's like 50 meters ahead and he just races and races and races and races and people don't catch on that he's not coming back and it is one it is the most exciting race uh ever like i could watch that race time after time after time and what's even more funny is he came back in 95 and he wins again and he wins with a sprint kick this time with a completely different tactic uh oh, it's an amazing race there's lots of amazing 5000 meter races to watch um mainly from back in the day it's mainly sit and kick these days isn't it um people used to take it by the scruff of the neck and like take it out hard um so yobizondiki and um um you know, John and Googie, um, yeah. great athletes from the past who knew how to race at 5,000 metres. Um, what other favourite moments? Bayer, oh, um, Bayer, your favourite is the women's 10 from 96. Okay, right? this, this is, a, this is a, again, a bit obscure, but um, when the Chinese all came <laughs> around in 92, 93, um, Wang Yunxia, we, we, we didn't, they were very mysterious, weren't they? Because they used to run these super fast times in China. They come to championships and do what Chinese takeaway, we used to say, uh, when they got all three medals in 93. And then they just disappear again. You would hear like all about all their exploits, but you had no way of actually sort of quantifying what they were doing. Um, at the 1996 Olympics, Wang Yunxia turned up and we were like, oh, here we go. We hadn't seen her. We didn't know she was going to be there. But she turns up in the 10K and she is running off. And just as she, she won the win, five first, didn't she? She did. She, she won the five first. Right. That's right. So with about, I think it's like 600 to go. She just runs off and you think it's all over. And then you see um, Fernando Ribeira, um, who was like probably the favourite going in. Um, it's like she's not getting any further away. And then Fernando's like sort of catching her slowly and you just think because it was just a given just a given one yunxi was going to win this gold medal you know the mysterious one yunxi um but she turns up and, and fernando is catching her and, catching her and she's catching her and she's catching her and she's catching her and you can't quite believe this is going to happen because like nobody beats one yunxi and and fernando Rubio does she just comes past in the last like i haven't seen it for a while so like last it's like 40 meters or something um it's just jaw dropping and it kind of humanized them a bit because you yes. know you just thought just thought they were cool. unbeatable. And then you thought, oh, hold on, hold on. They, they, they can be beaten. Um, yeah, that's one of my all-time favourite moments. It's just the kind of the incremental, like she she's slowly, slowly reaching her. And I just didn't think it was possible that she actually managed to do it. So um, Fernando Be Ribeira beating Wang Yuxia in the 1996 10,000 metre. That's a bit obscure, isn't it? I don't think that's many people's favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two more. This one is you, Bayer, and it's another 10,000 meter race, and it's because we were there. Paula, Paula. No, well, there's that oh, one. No, it's oh. Joe Pavey. Joe Who, Pavey. What? Oh, Joe Pavey. Yeah, in 1914. Uh, is it 14? Yeah. 14. Um, and I just burst into tears after she won the 10K at the Europeans. Because uh, again, she'd like she'd been around forever. She'd won medals at other championships. Um, but, but I burst into tears. She's 40 years old as well. She's 40 years old, yeah. And I think I burst into tears because I was also 40 years old, but I wasn't winning any technical races. <laughs> and um, also, we had, we had a really, really bad work situation going on. We, we had disappeared off to the World Championships and left our office, office having to deal with something that was really, really, um, really, really complicated. And I was in the middle, I kept running in and out of the stadium to like deal, deal with it. And then I just ignored that all to watch this 10K and then I burst into tears. And then I called them up and dumped the job, didn't I? I said, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Got my priorities right. <laughs> but like, there's pictures of you, like literally floods of tears that went Sorry, all, over, yeah. all over Twitter. <laughs> but there's one more. And the, like you said, Anna, there could have been a hundred of these, but there's one more that springs to mind. And it's Christina Horogu. 
Um, <laughs> in, I'm guessing 2007, because I mean, she won 2007, 2008, but 2007 was the shock. She'd obviously um, been away for a year because of the, um, she missed tests, didn't she? And back then in 2006, I believe, yeah, 2006, and I have, yeah, six. she was the first person to ever get done for missing tests. So like, especially in the UK, no one was, no one was even really taking the whole thing seriously. So yes, she did, she deserved a ban, but I feel very sorry for her because it could have been any one of a hundred other people who could have got caught out by that rule now. I think nowadays there's no excuse for that. It's been, you know, people have known about it for 17 years. Um, but she was the first person um, who got but caught also, out. just quickly, it, it was one of the very few countries where it even would have happened. Because I think yeah. it was like here, um, Italy, not Italy, here, um, Sweden and Germany were the only three countries where you weren't able to, like, call up and let someone know that you that they could come and meet you or something. So she was just really, really unfortunate. But sorry, go ahead. So she'd won, she'd won the Commonwealth Games in 2006, couldn't run the Europeans, and then was out for a year. And she came back probably, I think, two weeks before the World two Championships. And she'd run one race. Where was the... So the Championships were in a star Shanghai. High. She'd run in Shanghai or something like that? Yeah, she'd run it somewhere, like, in a little meet um, in, in Asia somewhere. But we'd caught it, and she'd run 50.5. And so I put money on her because I was like, you know, I think she was at 50 to 1 as well. So I put money on her at 50 to 1. Um, and she comes back and she wins the thing, like, in the closest thing ever. I mean, she, like... Um, uh, who was it, Sh um, Sharika Jackson, or um, not Sharika, wasn't it? No, Noveline. Anyway, no, no, I can't who, who decided to lean back at the line for some reason, and Christine leads forward, and Christine won by like two hundred. And, and Nicola was second, of course, and I did a, a, involuntary acrobatics across my living room. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. You've never seen. It. <laughs> he just started doing, he like doing roly polies off the same thing. <laughs> But I also won about a thousand pounds, so <laughs> so yeah. Um, I'll always be grateful to Christine, number one, for that just amazing sporting moment. But um, yeah, I won a lot of money off of her now uh, as well. So. <laughs> and now, to everyone, remember that you can enjoy more of their expertise and passion on the Backstreet uh, Boys uh, podcast. So thank you all for watching. And see you uh, next week on Love Athletics to look together at the highlights, comments, and analysis of what's been happening in the last four days of this fantastic World Championship in Oregon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, thanks so much.